Welcome to Living Like a G. I am sad to report that your girl got a parking ticket. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. But what is so frustrating about this parking ticket is it happened right outside of my house. And I know you're thinking to yourself, well, gee, you know, when you're in LA, these things happen. You don't read the sign right. You don't get street sweeping right. And you get a ticket and it happens to the best of us and you pay the $70 and that's it. Okay, well, first and foremost, this didn't even happen in LA. It happened in Riverside. And if anybody knows anything about California, Riverside is the most suburbia area you could think of. There are no street signs, okay? I don't even live in downtown Riverside. There are no street signs for anything. You park on the street like a normal, like you live in Oklahoma and you're parking on the street. There is none of that happening in Riverside. This isn't LA. This isn't even freaking the beach. This is a normal house on a normal street in suburbia. And so I guess Riverside decided we're gonna do street cleaning on every street within, I've only checked for two miles. So for sure I know a two mile radius, but I think it goes further than that. I think it goes like four miles and two Tuesdays a month, two, count them, one, two. You can't park on the street on your own, outside your own house. And not only not outside your own house, for at least a two mile radius on both sides. It's not even just one side, it's both sides of the street. That is the most stupidest thing I've ever heard. At least with LA, you're like, you know, you knew you were supposed to park on the other side of the street. Wednesday's one side, Friday's the other side, or whatever day it is. Ho, you knew. You knew, you took a risk, you didn't wake up when your alarm went off, or you set your alarm for 8 a.m. when street cleaning is at 8 a.m. Whatever the situation is, you knew. But in this situation, where am I supposed to go? Where am I supposed to go? Kansas? Is that how far this goes? I got to drive all the way to the Midwest just so I can park somewhere twice a month? Where's Toto? Because if I'm driving that far, I better have a dog. <laughs> like, what the heck? So I'm pissed, right? I'm super pissed. Tickets only like 40 bucks. But again, we talked about a couple weeks ago how hair dyes and what, what's my vibe. And I was saying blue is my favorite color, but blue internally is not me because blue represents peace and calmness and whatever. Oh no. This is a prime example of my personality. It's the principle. <laughs> I have this weird like personality where I grew up with a single parent, but every woman in my family is fiery. Just like independent women, strong you're not gonna tell me what to do, just has a fire within them, right? And then my mom is a redhead. She's got like the double portion, God gave her the double portion of fiery and passionate. And then me, I've got the heritage of a redhead. I've got the heritage of strong independent women, like just a side story, let me just tell you a side story. I, mean, I know I'm on a side story right now, but on another side story. My great, great grandma, okay, this is a, a testament to how uh, the lineage of no nonsense women that I have. My great, great grandma back in the day, she was super successful, owned this huge piece of land, okay, but back in during those times, if you married someone and then got divorced, the man, even though that was your land to begin with, the man then took your land and owned it, okay? So, my great grandma got remarried, remarried to a guy that was awful. And when they got divorced, he was like, I'm taking your land. And she was like, oh, no, you're not. You are not taking my land. So she decides to leave. But before she leaves, sets the whole land on fire. 
I don't know the statute of limitations on that felony. I mean, she's passed away now, obviously, so they can't really do anything about it now. But I don't know if they can arrest somebody in our family. I don't know what the heck's going on. But that is what my family comes from, from women, is setting people's land on fire. It's all about the principle. You knew that land wasn't yours. You knew it. And you were just trying to, uh, with the knife to her. And she was like, oh, no, you're not. I'm setting the whole thing on fire, Bubba. Anyway, so I come from this lineage of I have a mom who's a redhead. And this generational thing of strong women. And then on top of it, I'm half Italian. So, I mean, you could not get somebody who believes more in principle than I do. It doesn't matter to me what the law is. It's the principle of the fact that you will not let me park on either side of the street twice a month. It's my home. I mean, I didn't buy this house. My mom bought this house. But nonetheless, it's her home. You can't tell her twice a month that she can't park anywhere near her house when she bought this property. She is a citizen of Riverside. <laughs> I am a citizen of Riverside. I went to school here. I, I, oh, well, I went to call, not college. What am I saying? I went to high school here. I am a citizen of Riverside and I should not twice a month be booted out of my own city. It doesn't work like that. So anyways, in typical fiery fashion, I appeal it. Now in their defense, uh, I did, I did get a, yeah, I did get a few warnings, but the warnings were zero dollars. So I thought to myself, oh, they're not really giving real tickets out. They're just like giving warnings like, hey, if you can't park on the street, please don't. But if you are parking on the street, like the street sweeper guy will just like go around you. And I'm like, okay, like that's reasonable. I can live with that. Well, that came to an end and then I got a real ticket and I'm pissed. I don't care about the warnings because in reality, there's only a certain amount of cars that can fit in your driveway. And most households have more than two cars. Like in our household, we have three people that live here. So we have three cars. Like there's no way for everybody to shimmy around to fit in the driveway. Like my car is pretty long. My mom's car is pretty long. Like it's just not going to work. So anyways, I appeal it. First appeal, they're like, no, you deserve the ticket. But if you want to do a secondary appeal, here's where you are. And I'm like, oh, you thought that I would stop at the first appeal. No, sir. No, sir. Went through the second appeal. Sent in my second appeal. Had to send in a letter. All of this nonsense. Second appeal comes back and says, Sorry, we still think you're liable because we gave you a bunch of warnings. And I'm like, yeah, but you also are blocking both sides of my street. So then I go to the third appeal. Third appeal is a Zoom call. I thought it was supposed to be with the judge. So I literally before this Zoom call, I start researching legal stuff. I, I'm basically become Aaron Brockovich right before this legal meeting. I write down everything. I write out a little statement, all of the stuff. And come to find out, it's not even a judge. It's just some intermediary person before the judge. The next line is the judge. And so I read my whole, I said, okay, well, do you want me to read the little statement? I said, I took a bunch of pictures and, you know, sent them to him. And he goes, yeah, I'll read your statement. So I read my whole little statement, whatever. And I could tell he's like kind of disinterested, but, you know, being kind, listening to me and state my whatever. And, uh, and then he goes, I just have one question. And I go, okay. He goes, are both sides of the street blocked? And I go, yes. I say twice a month. Both sides of the street, you can't park anywhere. And, and I said, it's not only that you can't park anywhere, it's the same on every street within a two mile radius. So like, for instance, in LA, you could park across the street and it's like Monday through Wednesday street cleaning, right? 
But on your side of the street, it's Tuesday through Thursday. So you're like, worst case scenario, even if my whole block, let's say, if it, I mean, with LA, it's alternating sides. So at least you have alternating sides. But if both sides of the street were blocked, you still had the another cul-de-sac to go into with literally within a two mile radius. And that's only what I checked on so far. Every street within a two mile radius says you can't park here Tuesdays, two Tuesdays, the second and fourth Tuesday of the month. I'm like, this is shadiness at the highest level, at the highest level. You're just trying, you know, people are going to just pay the ticket and just, and just be like, ah, whatever. It's only 40 bucks. And I'm like, yeah, it's only 40 bucks. And what do I care about 40 bucks? I care goo gots about $40. Like zilch nada, could not care about $40. It's the principle. It is the principle of the fact that you know that that's shady and you are making citizens pay you and not standing up against it. That is wrong. City council needs to step up. That is so not right. And I, I'm literally, I'm going to fight this ticket all the way to the end. And then after I fight the ticket and it, you know, is approved that I don't have to pay it. The next thing I'm doing, and I was, I'm getting a board together. Like, I'm going to get a little, what's it called? Little handheld thing, get people's signatures and all kinds of stuff to change that. Because that's just ridiculous. That's not right. You're not treating the community right. That's just, and I'm saying that with a smile, but I'm dead serious. It is the principle. And I don't know if anybody else feels that way. But if you do feel that way, come to move, come move to Riverside so I can fight this stupid thing. That's what's happening in my life. That's what I've been dealing with. And you should have saw me too. I was literally like, this was suits. I was going in. I was like, what's the law say? Oh, the law says this. Okay, well, here's the loophole for this. La, da, 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 da. All this stuff. I was just going straight in legal. I was like, man, for real though, if I didn't want to be a musician, I could have gone into legal. Which actually I almost did. Fun fact about me. Always wanted to become a lawyer. But anyways, because it's about the principle. Even then I knew what was right and wrong. All right, well, if you liked this episode, please share it. Comment your stories below. I want to hear some crazy ticket stories and maybe stories on how you got out of your ticket. I want to see those comments like really bad because maybe that'll help me with my ticket. Have a great week. I'll see you next week. Peace.